Face front, true believers. This is Modular Media's No Prize Podcast, the podcast where we talk about Marvel movies, comics, television shows, merchandise, toys, and more. And please stop licking your thumb at me. <laughs> I'm your host, Chris Boingo, Ryder Gasson, and with me, as always, is the Vacuuminator. And for context, I had been eating a chocolate protein bar, so there was chocolate all over my fingers, and I thought it would be funny if I tried to fuck him up by by licking my fingers aggressively sexually at the camera. <laughs> Here's the thing, you can never fuck me up because I commit to the bit. Good for you. Commit to the bit. Commit to the bit. You want to hear if you want to hear that said more go watch this week's mmwp <laughs> which we just finished recording it's yep. 2 a.m everybody and Hallelujah. somehow i don't sound as tired as i did last week maybe it's this fucking bang energy i'm sure sponsored not, not sponsored. sponsored by the way yep please sponsor i mean we, sure why not uh but we are still currently in between mcu projects so we are going and diving down into the marvel legacy and we are diving into a brand new show this week that I loved as a kid that I have shown to VAC and go like, oh, hey, you're watch nostalgic this. for this? I didn't know. Yeah. You didn't tell me that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The, like, what we're talking about this week is Spider-Man Unlimited. Okay. So here's the thing. I I caught this on JetX and Toon Disney and all those places. So like I'd be scrolling by and it's like, oh, Spider-Man. I like Spider-Man. Who the fuck is this shit? awesome that's such a boingo reaction yeah so why don't you tell the folks the the basic idea of spider-man unlimited the basic idea you want the basic idea of this show Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's how many did i take the wrong edibles moments can we fit into 22 minutes that's the basic idea (laughs) do you want me to give the actual plot you can probably do it better than I can, honestly, because, like, that first, the first five minutes of this show are fucking insane, dude. Like, I, I was having such whiplash going, like, what, what's going on? Who's this character? Why, why whoa, 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 what is this person? What's going on with Peter right now? Why, why does Jameson sound funny? What's the status of the relationship with Mary Jane? Huh? What? Okay, so you know Spider-Man? You know the basic idea of Spider-Man? Okay, think of that. Uh-huh. Well, okay. So J. Jonah Jameson has always had a son in the comics who was an astronaut. It's always yeah. been a thing. Yeah, uh, so Jameson is about to go on a go on a merry adventure through a warp gate to the other side of the sun because they found a thing called Counter Earth. When when did the, when did they build this warp gate? How is that a thing? Before the show. Don't worry about it. Also, like uh that's such a Marvel ass thing to say, like, oh, it's not, it's not, uh, we're not naming it another unique planet name. It's not Earth 2. It's not anything like that. It's fucking Counter Earth. Yeah, Counter Earth. Such a 90s thing, too. Counter Earth. Yep. So Jameson goes through, and Peter Parker's trying to stop Venom and Carnage getting into the ship, and he does his whole Spider Man thing. He fucks up somewhere, and everybody thinks, oh, he's trying to sabotage this rocket ship. Fuck you, Spider-Man. So for like six months, Spider-Man is like persona non grata. Everybody hates him. And Peter Parker's just like, fuck the world. Fuck you. Fuck you. I was trying to save jo- uh, J- uh, Jameson. And then a message comes in and Jameson goes like, hey, y'all. Shit be fucking crazy over here. I need help. And Spider-Man goes like, fuck yeah, I can help him. Let me just pull out my handy dandy nano machine soup that I helped that. Reed Richards helped me, me uh, help me make that. Just did happens. He say to, that? Did yeah, he Reed Richards say, helped. Okay, him. I didn't catch that. I thought it was just like, nah. He just whipped this up over a weekend. Like that was that whole bit was insane to me. Like what? Okay, that's the explanation for this suit. Let's go. All right. Uh, and the suit looks like twenty ninety nine, just without the skull. It's it it's a it's a it's weird to see like how like goofy and action figure s that design looks without certain elements it looks good i like it it looks good but it looks like a fucking toy oh yeah no dude <laughs> this is just a toy car commercial for a toy yeah. line that i think never existed it does it does like mm, man but we'll get we'll get more into that so he gets on the ship he does the whole thing he gets on the counter earth not Turn before out. Not before fucking Nick Fury just shows up for five seconds to be like, Spider-Man, no, don't. Why not? Shit, you're right. Go ahead. With a jetpack. Just adjust yeah. a jetpack. For no reason. 
Um, so Spider-Man goes to counter Earth and he's like, all right, cool. Let me go help Jameson. Wait a second. Why does everything look like a cyberpunk neo-noir setting? Okay. Why the fuck are there furries everywhere? Okay. Why does Carnage look like a Zevo now? He looks fucking great. I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) I'm surprised you haven't brought up the fact that the symbiotes can just be moldable goo, even though they have human bodies in them the whole time. Yeah, they... Like, like I fucking for the first little bit of this show, I was like, okay, the symbiotes are just their own characters. Now nah, that's that's a little weird, but whatever. And then, and then like they mentioned that no, it's it's still Eddie and Cletus in there at one point, and I was like, what the fuck? How? <laughs> the more things. So Spider Man's freaking the fuck out, going like, what the fuck is happening? And then four four people roll up: a ram dude, a bear woman. A, uh, a cat man, a tiger man, if you will, and oh, a I rat know. girl. No, he doesn't have a mane. He's a tiger. He has stripes. Oh, yeah, that's right. And that's a rat true. woman. I'll roll up and go like, hey, yo, what's up? We're the Knights of Wondergore. What the fuck is a Knight of Wondergore? We are a Knight of Wondergore. Uh, Spider-Man, uh, we cool? You want to hang out with us? No, we're going to fight then. And so they fucking chase them. All the while, Rat Woman's fucking horny on main for Spider Dick. This uh, dude, dude, fuck me, was that hard to take at first? Like, I was like, how have I not? How has this not been parodied to death on like the level of the '60s show? What the hell? Why is there not like, like, where's the secret subculture of people that ship them and make embarrassing fan art and fan fiction when they're twelve? Show me that fucking alternate fucked up universe, goddammit. it! I am swearing like crazy tonight. I apologize. Yeah, but basically, Spider Man's trying to figure out what the fuck's going on. He's using all of his new powers and abilities of the suit, trying to trying to escape these knights, and he does. And the knights eventually no, that he doesn't. The knights eventually catch him, and they got him in a thing, and they're trying to figure it out. All the while, again, Rat Woman, horny on Maine. She want the spider dick. She wants to breed with that spider boy. And you know it's it makes sense when you reckon re- remember what her name is. Lady Vermin. Spiders are also considered a vermin and a pest. But they get the spider guy, and that's just the first episode. Yeah. That's, that's all um, the, the the primary setup. So you went into this blind. Yeah. I also love how you fucking skip over the fact that like there's this there's a scene with Mary Jane in this that implies they're living together and probably maybe married, I don't know. And he's just like, Yeah, I'm just gonna fuck off to another planet. Don't worry about it. I'll be back. I'm, I'll be I'm back determined. in time for dinner. Don't worry about it. For an indeterminate amount of time. I don't but, know like, when the I'll only be back. lines she gets the only lines Mary Jane gets in this show. This is the thing that fucked me up. The, uh, this and Fury were like the two things that I was like, what? Why would you throw these characters in if you're just going to do this? Because Mary Jane has this scene after all the stuff of like Spider-Man getting shit on across New York where she's like, oh, I feel so bad for him right now. I wish he'd just quit and just be my husband because he just he he's not happy now and he deserves happiness. And then he's just like, yeah, I do. I'm going to fuck off to another planet and leave you here alone. What? Uh, <laughs> what? That's the worst part. We'll get into the worst part because what we did, we only uh, the plan was to only watch the first four episodes. So that's all Vac watched the first four episodes. Mm-hmm. I, I watched decided, three last night and one tonight to kind of keep I, myself fresh. I decided to watch all of them, all thirteen episodes. It gets fucked, dude. Does he? Does he? Does he get? No, 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 no. But Peter Parker Hammond Pro Tag is in full swing. Oh my god. So in the second episode, it ter- we we get some backstory for this whole thing. We get we finally get some understanding. So the High Evolutionary, which is a Marvel Comics canon character, decided, you know what? Fuck Earth. I don't want to be on Earth anymore. I see Counter Earth. I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna go build my build my paradise. If I'm wrong, is this is this like completely different from the fucking comics? High evolutionary. Yes, (laughs) this is completely different than the high evolutionary in the comics. In the comics, he's like purple. If I remember correctly, isn't like he like having shit to do with the Kree or something like that? I don't know. I don't remember. But basically, he gets to counter Earth and goes like, "There's humans here. It's just shit. Fuck." So he goes like, you oh, know, what? man, there's fucking greed and capitalism and wars and racism. This is just like regular Earth. This place sucks. 
I'm gonna make some fucking furries. I'm gonna make some furries. And like he just makes furries and goes like, alright, cool. They're better than humans. You get to there's only one type of racism. It's racism against humans. Except for me. I'm exempt from for some reason. And so basically they're trying to they're trying to, to, to break into Spider Man, trying to figure out is he a bestial, is he a human? What's up with him? I like that detail that they can't like get they can't it's a nano it's a suit made out of nanites, so they can't just pull the mask off. Like that's yeah. That's something that most cartoons struggle with with superheroes. They captured the superhero. Why don't they just take his mask off? Yeah, they don't think of it. Um, but like this, there's a fucking reason for it. That's one of the that's one of the things that I was really impressed with this show about is having that explanation. Yeah. Also, I really enjoy just having the full black shadow on the front of the mask at all times. Mm-hmm. It's a nice look. I like it. Uh, but basically, the rebel faction comes in and breaks them up. Breaks them out. Oh. By the way, you didn't know there's a rebel faction of yeah. like freedom it's, fighting it's, humans, and it's made up of Scarlet from GI Joe, uh, a fucking Spawn character, and then Chuckles from GI Joe. <laughs> <laughs> she also looks like Elsa Bloodstone. <laughs> she does. Oh my god, it's Elsa Blood. No, it's Elsa Bloodstone, a random Spawn character, and then Chuckles from GI Joe. Who's who, who's trying to who's trying so hard to be Constantine? Yeah. Oh god. It's fucking, they're breaking him out and they're going like, "Yo, the high evolutionary's bullshit. He came in, did all the shit to us. It, it's fucking bullshit. Oh, uh, it sucks, you know." And they're escaping. They're running away. They're trying to get out of it. Big old chase scene, all nine yards, and then they arrive in the basement. Now you may be asking, "What's the?" basement the basement's the underbelly where all the humans live that's it yeah and so they're so I basically love that, i love that it's like oh the humans are oppressed but not like the humans are being regularly fucking slaughtered or anything no they just live in a slum yeah but we basically the shitty houses that we didn't want anymore yeah and, and, and it gives them less economic opportunity you know how like we normally oppress people in the real world god damn with, it dude. with also police brutality this show is not smart enough to have been thinking that way. Fuck no. all. But goddamn, you can make that point. You can make it. So they go into the sewers because they're trying to take him to the rebel leader. And then uh, Rat Lady comes in and goes like, yo, still horny for Spider Dick, but we're letting him go so we can find the rebel base. And Tiger Man goes like, yeah, you're great. Keep doing uh, do your job. Does Tiger Man want to want to fuck Rat Lady? Is that no. a thing they were trying to get across as well? No, Tiger Man's just a noble dude. He's just a, he's a good guy. For him. Uh, so they're getting to the the rebel base, and they're 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 going through the whole thing. They're trying to they're trying to be trying to get to everything. Venom and Carnage show up, and they show off what they're doing. It's zombies. Yeah, it's it's body snatching. It's it's a shitty version of Noel way before Noel existed. Yeah, uh, synoptic. <laughs> Such a '90s name. Yep. Uh, and they finally get to the rebel leader, and lo and behold, it's J. It's Jameson. John Jameson. John. Voiced Jameson. by a man, John fucking Payne. I popped over that. Do you know who John Payne is? No. He is Tell a me. he is a voice actor from the mid '90s to early 2000s, and like he kind of dropped off for a little bit, and then he did. The fucking reboot of Superbook. He was a bunch of voices in that, and then he hasn't done anything since. Um, but he is a major voice from my childhood because he voiced Duke in the mid two thousand CGI GI Joe movies. Hmm. And uh, this wasn't like something I watched a lot as a kid, but I caught it a couple times. He's Doctor Watson in Sherlock Holmes in the twenty second century. Oh dear God, that's another nineties ass fucking TV show. Yeah, but basically, uh, Jameson's going like, "Hey, Spider Man, we can't, we can't leave yet. The humans are oppressed. We got it. We got to fight the system." Spider Man's going like, "Motherfucker, we don't live here. What are you talking about?" And then all the Venom zombies come in, and Lady Rat, Rat Lady's like going like, "Hey, yo, we found your base." And everybody goes like, "Oh, Spider Man, you fucking, you asshole, you let him here." And it's like, "I didn't lead him here on purpose. You led me here." And they're like, "Oh shit, you're right." And then Rat Lady's horny on Maine for Spider Man. I love how I love how you just keep dropping that. That's great. You're doing a good job here, buddy. What? Describe her character any other way. 
what is her character other than horny for Spider-Man? Uh, fan art bait? Pretty much so. I mean, like, I'll be I'll be honest. I was half tempted just to check if there's leads of her. Are you checking right now? No, I'm not. I'm scrolling through the episode. <laughs> I'm scrolling through the face. Episode. You made a face like, oh, let me check. Do you want me to check? Fuck it, I'll check. What's her goddamn name? Lady Vermin. Lady Vermin. Oh, it autocompletes to Spider-Man. <laughs> There's an autocomplete for kissing Spider-Man. There's an autocomplete for Lady Vermin and Spider-Man fan fiction. Oh my I'm just going to search Rule 34 on the Google. There's a fucking page on Rule34.com. Oh my god. Oh my god. There is one, two, three, four, five whole images. That's and, five whole uh, images? More than I thought there would be. They're honestly not bad. There's some decent There's some decent artistic quality on display here. Nothing too, uh, too distasteful either. Except for this one. This one's a little rapey that I'm looking at right now. Uh, uh, it's not the character you'd think. Um, ooh, here's a, here's a very tasteful picture of just her in a yoga outfit. That's, that's nice. That's nice that somebody made that. I, I appreciate that there's modern fan art of this character. Uh, hashtag Nick Spencer make Lady Vermin can into the 616. God damn it. I will get to something. I will get to a point of that later. Not Lady Vermin in specific, but in general. But basically, they they fight off the Venom people and the duo, the whole thing. And basically, all the Rebel faction goes like, "This is fuck. We need to find a new place." So they so they go out, and Jameson like finally makes his case for like, "No, we need to help these people." And Spider Man goes like, "Fine, I'll help, but not on your terms. I'm gonna help my way because I'm Spider Man." And then he's <laughs> and then he's in in the basement running around, and he finds this young boy being accosted by a, a robot. He finds I, a little black kid. No, this no, no. Mixed kid. Maybe it look the the way it looks. Mom's the kid, Japanese. That's that's what I was saying though. Like they make it out. It was weird to me because he he looks. He, I'll say he's black leaning. Um, and his he mom is, is like super fucking Asian. And I was like, damn, how black was your dad? Well, we meet him later. Oh, we okay. So they they didn't just tease that for nothing. That does happen. Yeah. Um, and Peter Parker basically stops the robot and tackles it and saves the kid and the, and the kid's mom goes like, you know what? You need some, you need some help. Your hands are hurt and you need a place to stay. Guess what? You're staying with us. Also, you got to pay rent after two weeks. Yep. So that's the, that's the basic background setup of Spider-Man Unlimited. How many questions did you have after watching just these two episodes? I mean, it wasn't so much a matter of questions after I I get to the end of the pilot. Um, it's more so just like, wow, this is such a bizarre premise that feels like it comes purely out of a mindset of we want to make something that can act as a sequel to the 90s animated series that everyone remembers. But also we want to mix up the art style and also we want to make all these toys and also... And also, but what if we, and, and also, and, and, and also, and also, and also. I mean, that's honestly the vibe for the entire thing, the and also. Yeah. Um, because, just, and also, the next episode, mm -hmm. uh, Green Goblin shows up. And Green Goblin's like a, Green Goblin's like a weird halfways between regular Green Goblin and ultimate Green Goblin in design. But apparently he's just wearing an Iron Man suit kind of a deal. And he's a good guy. What? Okay. Yep, 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 yep. Also, he's a wise guy just as much as Spider-Man, and they, and they like, hate each other's jokes. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they hint at the fact that Green Goblin is, uh, the, is the dad of that family. Oh, is that? I didn't catch that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's their dad. That's the dad. Oh, that's legit. Okay. Is he black? They don't ever reveal his face. No, they do. They do in the past, and yeah, he's he's black. He's about the same skin tone as uh, his son. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much episode three. Anything else you, you anything you want to bring up about episode three? Let's let's scroll through it a little bit and see if there's anything weird about it. Oh yeah, Peter Parker also gets a job at the local newspaper selling pictures of Spider Man. Mm -hmm. Here's discount. Jameson, who kind of looks like a mix between actual Jack Kirby and Perry White. 
Yeah, yeah. They all, they, we also explore the synoptics some more about what the whole Venom and Carnage plan is, what their whole goal is. Because mm-hmm. remember, they were trying to get to that planet because they sensed that the synoptic was there, which I found very odd. I'm like, if you guys knew the synoptic was there, why weren't you always trying to get to this planet? Yeah, if they weren't really doing any rockets. For the 90s show. Rockets from uh, New York. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh, can we like can we sidebar for, uh, we'll talk about some aesthetics with this show real quick? Yeah, let's talk about the vibe. Because like fucking the art style of this show is one of the most interesting things to me. Because it feels like they said, okay, we want it to look kind of like the 90s show. Like it, I keep saying the 90s show. This came out in 99, but you know, the 90s show that everybody remembers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the Aerosmith. Yeah, we want it to kind of look like that, so it could probably maybe be a backdoor sequel to it. But also, um, we're very influenced by comic book art, so we're going to make it look kind of like Jack Kirby and also kind of like Steve Ditko. And those three things just mix together to make one of the most generic 90s animation styles. Yes, but the designs themselves are interesting. I like the Spider-Man suit. I like I like aspects of it because it feels... It's weird. It just has a vibe I mean, that I dig. I mean, I'll I'll say I'll flat out say it. I like the Knights of Wonder Gore designs enough that I would buy Marvel Legends of them. The Knights of Wonder Gore are great. I like this Green Goblin design. Not as Green Goblin full time, but like a Green Goblin. That's dope. I dig it. Respectful disagree. Oh come on! I love the wings with the little hands. But not for me. Uh, the rebels are all cool looking. The Rebels are cool looking in like a dumb 90s way. Oh, like, like (laughs) these are great. These are great only in the context of this show. I don't want to if these characters ever showed up somewhere else, I'd want their designs to be completely different. What you don't want? You don't like the guy just wearing a T-shirt and a tie? No, I'm not a fan of Chuckles. He's he's one of my favorite G.I. And a sleeveless fucking trench coat and a fucking tattoo that just says mom. Oh, yeah, because he's super British, yo. Isn't this such a realistic British accent? Because for some reason, Britain... For for some reason, this planet is exactly the same as Earth, except it's post-apocalyptic now. And look at the look at all the furries. Look at all the furries. Here's a turtle right. man. You like this turtle man? Goddamn. Also, there's a lot of Japanese fashion influence in this, too. Mm, yeah. Because there's a one random background girl who has, like, a plushy bear aesthetic... Like, she has plush bears. Yeah, the Peter dark. saves her, like, within the first few minutes of him arriving on Counter-Earth. Yeah, that's, like, a complete Harajuku-style, like, fashion, like, old school, like, of that time. That's Japanese fashion to a T. Yeah. Um, and then, like, the sound design for the show is one of the things that really caught me was, like, this doesn't sound like a cartoon to me. This sounds like a late 90s, early 2000s video game. Like, this put me in the mind of shit like Deus Ex or even fucking Spider-Man 2, the video game. Like, that kind of shit. It makes good sound. It's good music. I mm-hmm. love the it's intro. The, the intro is it's so, fucking banger. It's so fucking 90s, but, like, it works. And it's, like, it's a great... It's the perfect way... The, the way they storyboard out the comic book... The, the comic book. The comic book origin. And, like... I love how the animation style and that goes from we're kind of Jack Kirby to we are exactly Jack Kirby, Steve Ditko, depending on the panel we're showing you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, But then we have episode four, which is the last episode you watch, which is Deadly Choices, where we get some backstory on that Spawn character. Yeah, Bandage Man. I don't remember his fucking name, even though I watched that episode like a couple hours ago. We're basically Sir Ram kidnapped a kid off the street and conducted horrific experiments on him. Yeah, that's, so he that's stole a- something from Saram, which turns out to be a biological weapon that both groups have to team up to get back from him before it destroys the city. Because the kid thinks it's like, oh, maybe this might cure me because mm-hmm. he wants to be normal. And also, there's a beautiful moment. It's like when he's a kid, he gives Sir Ram like a piece of candy thinking like, oh, innocence of youth. And Sir Ram just like, nope, kidnap. All the while, the dude's running away. Everybody's trying to figure out the figure out the kid. Figure just try and solve the problem. Get the bomb, and everybody's freaking out. It's like, oh my god! All the while, this guy can hide anywhere because he's just living bandages, which is 
honestly a very cool and unique superpower. I really dig it. Yeah, he's Ragman. Yeah, it's really dope. I dig it. It's a it's a cool vibe. So, do you ever- understand what I did there? No. Ragman is an actual character from DC. Oh, okay. When did he come yeah. out? I think he's been around since like the 60s or something like that, but he didn't get like a proper solo series. He had like a maxi series towards the tail end of the new 52. And I remember hearing good things about it, but I never read it. But yeah, basically, Rag, uh, Bandage Boy is running around and the Knights of Wondergore and the Rebels have to team up in order to stop the kid. And that's pretty much it. It's just it's just backstory for the kid and like showing that some of the knights are more amicable, amicable than others. Like Sir Ram just hates this idea and he doesn't want to do it. But the mm-hmm. tiger's going like, bro, we need their help. It's easier, man. Come on. Mm-hmm. The en- the ending was honestly kind of fucking hilarious. Where they're like, oh shit, it's gone past one minute. We can't deactivate it. And Spider Man just hands it to Ragman. I'm calling him th- that that now. Fuck it. Uh, and Ra- and Ragman just does shit with his bandages and fixes it. And it's like, how did you do that? How how did you know you could do that the whole time? How did Spider Man know you could do that? What 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 just that? Okay, f- the episode's over. That's fine. Yeah. And basically, the dude then immediately starts jumping to uh, Sir Ram and just beating him up. And the rebels and the knights go like, you know what? Fuck y'all anyway. We, did, we didn't want to work with you anyhow. Uh-huh. And uh, we do get a little brief segment with the dad, the Green Goblin dude outside of the costume. Yeah, where he's basically like, hey, you fucking dating that guy that's staying in the room? She's like, no, I'm not fucking dating that guy that's staying in the room. He is kind of hot, though. And the and the kid's like, don't fight. Are his dad coming back? What? Don't fight. No fighting. I'm a stereotypical child in a cartoon. That's where you stopped in watching. So let me let me explain the rest of this series to you. You ready? Okay, Tell you me ready? More, Papa Boingo. Okay, so episode five. It's called Steel Cold Heart. Okay, you know those robots the knights have been uh, ordering around. Uh huh. Well, Spider-Man comes across one of the oldest ones still running. Like, he was the 51st one off the belt, uh, off the factory floor. Okay. And he's going like, no, nah, man, I still function. And Spider-Man's going like, oh, shit, is this robot becoming sentient? And so the whole episode is just Spider-Man trying to save this robot dude. Hmm. And the robot dude goes like, you know what? I, I am sentient. I want to help out. I'm, I'm going to fight the system. I'm going to fight the system that wants to destroy me. It's like, cool. They now have... And uh, they now have an ally. Sick. Yeah. Episode six. It's basically Craven the Hunter. It's not Craven the Hunter. It's a completely another dude called the Hunter. But it's basically Craven the Hunter. Damn, dude, this show fucking reeks of Avia Rob. <laughs> Episode seven. Cry Vulture. Guess what? Vulture's in this universe. Cool. Guess what, though? He's a bestial man who's friends with a human boy as a kid, but then he had peer pressure to be racist, and he hurt his best friend's feelings. And Vulture Man was like, no, I must fight for the humans now for equality. He fights for the users. Good for him. But also he sees Spider-Man goes like, bro, you're human. You're dressing like a bestial. You're a fucking, fucking poser, bro. Why are you doing that, man? And they, right. yeah. Episode 8, Jameson's a werewolf. John Jameson? John Jameson's a werewolf. I. John Jameson's a werewolf. Because when he first landed, the High Evolutionary decided to conduct experiments on him and turn him into a bestial. But John Jameson escaped before he could finish. So whenever it's moon, whenever it's like nighttime, he turns into a werewolf. You know, like a werewolf by night? So he's fucking Common Rider? No, because he has, he has a little implant in his thing that like... It just makes it, like, not turn into a werewolf. But it, every once in a while, it gets shorted out. So he turns into a werewolf. Rawr. That's That sounds like the premise to Kamen Rider 1971. Uh, and then episode 9, subs, uh, uh, Sustenance. Green Goblin is freaking out about his wife and kid and going, like, I don't like this Peter Parker guy. I'm going to follow this Peter Parker guy. Peter Parker Spider-Man? Bro, I thought Spider-Man was a friend. And he's going around with my lady? Nah. So he starts fighting Spider-Man and he goes like, yo, I know what's up, Peter Parker. And he's just like, what the fuck? How could you do this to me? How could you? What? What oh, you he want? outs him? He legit outs him? 
He tell to him to Spider Man. That's about it. He just goes like, okay. "I know your secrets, Peter Parker. Get away from my wife, or I'll tell the world." And he's like, "Dude, I'm trying to leave the planet. I'm I know where my spaceship is. I'm trying to leave. I don't want to deal with this anymore. I'll let Jameson fucking have his furry fest, whatever." And uh, fucking Green Goblin goes like, "Yo, you're leaving? I just Hell thought yeah, of the most. Me. I just thought of the most hilarious thing. Hmm. Spider Man gets back to Earth. Jonah's like, "Where's my son? Your son's a werewolf. What?" Son's a werewolf and just keeps walking. <laughs> and so the Green Goblin goes like, "Yo, dude, I'll help you get off the planet. Let's do it." And so they're trying. So they're in Atlantic City. They are specifically in Atlantic City. Okay. They're in Atlantic City. They repeat like several times. Like it's not even. It's not like a one-time thing. It's like like five times in this episode. They go like, "We are in Atlantic City." Whoa. So they find the big, the big sp- the station where they have the, the fucking. Because the... that's something we didn't talk about. The comic panels in the corner of every establishing shot aren't enough to let you know. Yeah, I like it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a motif. It's, it's a vibe. It's cute, but it feels very dated. It, it, it it's kind of like the sliding, the sliding footage in fucking Ang Lee's Hulk. It is very much like. We're trying to adapt the comic. We need to make it feel like a comic before realizing that to make it feel like a comic, you just kind of you just make have a story. Vibe. Yeah. Uh, so they're trying to get to the spaceship, but they get uh, they get in trouble, and some rejects help them. What's a reject? Well, they're a bestial that didn't come out right. Like maybe it's a crocodile head with a human body. Oh, or... sick. Morlocks are in this universe. Yeah, they're basically Morlocks. Oh. Okay, hold on. Did I? Is it still saved? No, I need to find it. Cause goddamn, there is a fucking frame of this episode that is just so fucking amazing. I have to show it to you. Okay, let me find it. God damn, I'm just looking at this veiny ass Venom design right now with the ridiculous like semi spine endoskeleton. It's so weird and skinny ass bony ass carnage too. What the fuck? So, that's a legit frame from this episode. Describe to the audience what you're seeing. I'm seeing a, uh, a duck man who's not being faced at all by the fact that Green Goblin is pretty upset at him. Her. That's, uh, that's a woman. Alright. She's a duck-mole hybrid. So you're gonna need to work that into the episode image somehow. <laughs> and so basically, uh, the, the, the rejects go like, Yo, we're gonna help I'm you gonna out, Spider-Man and Green this. Goblin. I'm going to fucking tweet this right now. <laughs> you listening to me talk about uh, I'm going to tweet Unlimited. this on the modular account. You are you are the duck lady. I am Green Goblin trying to explain Spider-Man Unlimited. It's so true. <laughs> I'm not giving it that caption though cuz it won't make sense. No, but goddamn that's a fu- <laughs> like it's shit like that that makes me go like this needs to be the biggest fucking meme. Why isn't the show more of a meme? It's so um, that's, fun. That's what, I'm a, with, that's what I'm about to try and start. I so want to just cut out that duck head and use it as an emote in my Discord server. Good buddy, you fucking shit. All right, I'm going to tweet this. Maybe I should also do that Green Goblin head too. <laughs> but so the rejects go like, hey, uh, we're going we're gonna to help you out, guys. Let's take you to our leader. Their leader is a giant caterpillar caterpillar lady with the head of like a green alien with the big, big old eyes with butterfly wings on her back. But she's a caterpillar. Okay. And they go like, all right, cool. We're going to take you up to take you up to the fucking uh, base and we'll do the thing. They get to the base and they go like, sorry, guys, we're there's actually a reward for you. And we were thinking of like turning you into the high evolutionary so they could just leave us alone. And they're like, do you really think that's going to happen? And they're like, fuck, you're right, man. I guess we're fighting with you. All right, let's do it. And so they try and get to the spaceship. Uh, it goes off and Spider-Man can't hold on. It, get, it leaves the atmosphere. It's going back to Earth. But Spider-Man's not in it. He's stuck on this Earth. There's nothing he can do. Fuck. What's going to happen now? Episode 10. This is going to be your favorite episode. Guess what? Chuckle fucks the main character in it. Uh, <laughs> why is... How long is the show? How many episodes? We're on episode 10. There's 13 episodes. Thank God. Okay. So, turns out his name's Bromley. Bromley... Used to have a family before, shock and awe, 
the high evolutionary took over and made all the bestials things and they kicked all the people out of their houses so he got separated from his family and his brother and he's looking for them and guess what the high evolutionary and the knights of wondergore they know where they are and so they go like hey man if you bring spider-man here we'll take you to your family you don't like spider-man that much anyway anyway right and he goes like you know what yeah let's do it so he tricks spider-man to coming down getting trapped and he goes like all right cool he Here's the information about your brother and all this kind of stuff. And like Spider-Man goes like, Brahma, you're being kind of an asshole. And he goes like, you know what? I am being kind of an asshole. So they escape and they go like, oh, right. Where's what your brother? With this basic bitch melodrama. Oh, no, no. It gets better. It gets better. Oh, boy. So they find out where his brother is. He's working in the underbelly of the high evolutionary's castle in the middle of New York. There's a castle in the middle of New York. By the way, this counter Earth has a New York. It is New York. Yeah, that that was something that kind of threw me. Like, uh, I think they say it in episode four that they're in New York, and I'm like, what? What the? What are the fucking odds that he just land on this Earth's version of New York? What the hell? So they go. So they're signing to break into the to break into the castle. And Spider-Man goes like, I know what we can do. We can hide in the service thing. Well, I'll dress up in the uniform. And because I have a spider mask, they'll think I'm a spider bestial dude. And they do. And he's like, oh, hey, we're going in. And they're trying to sneak in. And guess what? Spider-Man uses the power of horny on Maine to trick the rat lady. Because he's scrolling by. And he's trying to bring Bromley in. And he's in, and Bromley's in, the, in a basket. And he's just pushing him along. And Lady Vermin goes like, Spider-Man, what the hell are you doing here? And he just pushes the card off to the side and goes like, uh, uh, I'm, I'm here for you, Lady Vermin. I, I just can't stop thinking about you. I, I'm horny on Maine for you, Peter, Lady Vermin. Peter, that is false pretenses. You never want to do that to a lady. They're fucking crazy. She'll rip your eyes out, man. So she's she, she she gives Spider Man a kiss on the cheek and goes like, "All right, meet me in my room in fifteen minutes. I want to get pretty for you." <laughs> it's 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 fucking two thirty in the morning. My mom is sleeping directly below me. You cannot fucking drop shit like that on me. Shit, she doesn't say it, but Spider Man shows up to Bromley and he goes like, "Okay, what's happening with Lady Berman?" And he goes like, "Oh, she wanted to have fifty minutes to to get more co- to get into something more comfortable." <laughs> like, <laughs> there's a reason. Please tell me, I- please tell me, this is as bad as that shit gets. Yes, yes, that's that's, that's as bad as as bad as it got. That's why I kept repeating. She is horny on main for Spider Man. Mm-hmm. She wants that spider dick. So they go down into the basement of the the castle. Remind you, it's a castle in New York. Also, I love how you just told me all this, and like literally right now, I've just been having the episodes play on Disney Plus while we're talking. I literally just went past the scene where he sits down all like mournfully and goes, "Someday, somehow, I'll get back to you, MJ." <laughs> oh, yeah, all the while, every once in a while, there's moments where he, f- where he like sees MJ and his landlady's face. When she's like saying like, "Oh, Spider Man, like you need to do something about the world. Like you need to be, you need to be a good guy." And he goes like, "Oh man, that's something MJ would say." And remember the redheaded uh, uh, rebel lady? She eventually says like, "Spider Man, you're kind of an asshole. You you should help people." And he just goes like, "Come on, MJ!" And he grabs her shoulder and she just looks at him, and goes like, "Who the fuck is MJ?" And he's like, "Uh, uh." Damn, Peter, I'm embarrassed for you. Okay. I haven't even finished this fucking episode. God. So Bromley and Spider-Man are in the basement, and they find the water treatment area. The way they treat the water is they have these giant vats of water and catfish men in them. Like catfish. Catfish men. Like dudes, catfish. And a person with a giant electric pokey stick is on the top going like, fucking clean the scum. Eat the scum, you scum suckers. Zap. Okay. And five seconds later, they're watching this. And the dude who was doing it's gone. And the person who picks it up, it's Bromley's brother. His brother's a fucking torturing catfish man. And it's like, oh no, what's going to happen? Bromley goes up to his bro and goes like, bro, it's been so long. It's, it's so good to finally see you. And his brother goes like, oh yeah, it is so finally good to see you. I can turn you in and get a promotion. I'm evil. Ha ha. <laughs> oh, wow. What a surprise. Fucking M. Night Shyamalan. He's done it again. So they have a big old fight, whatever, and Bromley fights his brother on the fucking pathway on top of the goddamn 
water vats. He pushes them into the water vats. Oh, guess what? It's all the catfish men he tortured. So they just grab him and drown him. They drown him. Like, they kill this dude in this kid's TV show. Dick. So that at the end, Bromley's just going like, oh man, I killed my brother. But I guess I have my real family. The Rebels. That's, that's fucking sad. I feel really sorry for Bromley. <laughs> if I if it, if I were Bromley, I'd kill myself, honestly. All right, next episode: the Venom symbiote gets separated from Eddie Brock. We have an Eddie Brock episode, but yeah, here's the thing: let's go. Eddie Brock is so addicted to the Venom, even though he doesn't want the symbiote back because he wants to die a man. He's he's gonna die because he doesn't have the Venom symbiote. So Spider Man's trying to save his life. So he's trying to find the Venom symbiote and get it back on Venom. And when he does, he accidentally destroys the clinic that his landlady owns. Oh, no. And he gives the Venom symbiote back to Brock. So he saves Eddie Brock's life. And she's just going off on Spider-Man going like, fuck you, Spider-Man. He would have died a man. He wouldn't have become a monster again. And you destroyed all my shit. You're a fucking asshole, Spider-Man. Fuck you. And he just goes like, man, no matter where I go, everybody just hates Spider-Man. That's that episode. Well, maybe you should stop being such a fuck up, Pete. All right, episode 12, Sins of the Father. All right, this is a Kieran episode, the red-headed rebel girl. She's the granddaughter of, she's the granddaughter of High Evolutionary. Fucking called it. And she doesn't know it. And he goes like, oh shit, you're my granddaughter that I thought had died. Oh my god, I, I want to turn you into a bestial so you'll be accepted by our new society. And she's like, no, I don't even know who you are. Because he who doesn't tell her. I- did the High Evolutionary fuck one of his furries? No. He had human He had human children. Lame. Yeah. These, the creators of this show are fucking cowards. If, if you're going to put furries in your show, have someone fuck a furry. I mean, Spider-Man almost did. Almost isn't good enough. All right. But that's, but that's episode 12. Episode Canonize 13. the Rule 34 page that I just looked at. Episode, 30, uh, episode 13, Destiny Unleashed. So Spider-Man, the Rebels, uh, X-51, Green Goblin. Who the fuck is X-51? The robot. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah he's called that. That's his, that's his name, X-51. Okay. So they all team up to, to, to fight the high evolutionary bullshit, you know? Do all that kind of stuff. They're trying, they're trying, all that kind of stuff. All the while, they get cut. Ca- all the humans get captured. They're about to be fucked up and experimented on. All... Oh no, Cletus Cassidy and Venom uh, and Eddie Brock lose their symbiotes. They're just by themselves now. And Cletus does absolutely nothing weird and crazy. He's just a normal dude. Ooh. Okay. Okay. So they're trying to escape. They're trying to do this whole thing, right? They're fighting. They're doing the whole battle. Spider-Man eventually gets everybody loose and they're about to run and escape. And Eddie Brock goes like, no, man, you don't realize what's wrong here. The symbiotes put a dead man switch that if i was ever separated from the symbiote again the synoptic would explode and spore all over new york and turn everybody into symbiote zombies and then the whole thing fucking explodes from the underground and that's the end of the series 10 out of 10 that's the end 10 out of 10 ign there is there is no more spider-man unlimited it ends on a giant ass zombie cliffhanger so I checked in the credits, it was actually him. Avi Arad, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, some people like to fuck rat lady. Fuck you, Avi Arad. I'm so glad you're not involved with Marvel anymore. So that's Spider-Man Unlimited. What are your feelings on this show? Well, obviously, Avi Arad is a secret furry. We've learned that this week. Because I'm just going whole, whole hog on the fuck Avi Arad bit, I guess. But, uh... I mean, nothing wrong with furries. Sure. Um, yeah, uh, this is definitely a product of its time. Very, 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 very hardcore on that, that aspect of it. Um, it's not bad. Like, I, I, I would struggle to call this outright bad. It's just fucking weird. It's one of the many, many weird random shows from the 90s that you just look back on and go like, how the hell did this get made? What was going on? Well, oh, huh? How many edibles did they take? Oh, look, Scott McNeil got some work. Good for him. Yeah, he's a good John Jameson. Mm-hmm. No, that's that's John Payne. Scott McNeil is fucking carnage in this show. Oh, okay, yeah. And he, God damn, God. you know who Scott McNeil is, motherfucker? Yeah, he was in Beast Wars. Yeah, he's fucking Waspinator. Yeah. And uh, Rat Trap. He's, he's Rat Trap and Waspinator. 
Speaking of rat trap. <laughs> I just fucking God, did, did you really just say that? Holy shit, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I saw the. I saw it. I had to take the shot. I, I never I, thought yeah. you would be the one to make a sex pun on this joke. Wow. Oh man. But nah. Th- this show goes in fucking weird places. It, it. But it's like. Here's the thing. It does not feel like it's not a Marvel property. It feels 100% Marvel. This feels like. What if. This feels like another way of doing Spider Man 2099. Like. Like, if Spider-Man 29 was Doom 2099, Peter gets catapulted to a post-apocalyptic future. Yeah, but, but like... And it's an alternate Earth that just exists in our solar system, and we never noticed until now. This is, this is fucking what if Spider-Man went to Mondas? Yeah, dude, like, here's the other thing. Like, several times, they show a raccoon man who just looks like Rocket Raccoon. Cool. Dude, like, this is, like, one part Rocket Raccoon's backstory... What it's fucking god, and there's so much like built in lore that you know they were dead ass proud of. The Knights of Wonder Gore that's a fucking name right there. They thought they had plans, they wanted 10 seasons in a movie, and they wanted they wanted so many toys, dude. This was gonna be symbiote. This is gonna be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles with that toy line. This is what they wanted, and like fucking, I'd have. I'd go back and buy some if they existed. Like, fucking... Where's my Pixel Dan video of the forgotten Spider-Man Unlimited toys? I, wa- I want that to exist, but that toy line probably doesn't even exist, and I'm sad now. I've made myself sad, boy. I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking, because God... Oh, my God. Okay, no. They just... Oh, it, this oh. is, these are our customs. Custom Marvel Legends. Uh, I hate Hasbro. Like, I'm not asking for every character, but, like, if you could just give me, like, a fan channel exclusive Knights of Wonder Gore set, I'd buy it. That'd be fucking dope. I would buy fucking Spy Rat Lady and do a bunch of, like, her dominating Spider-Man joke posts. The fucking, uh, her putting her hand on the wall and leaning over (laughs) Spider-Man. Goddamn, but, like... Also, technically, Peter Parker Henshin's. Yeah. He has a henshin device. Yeah, that's the whole thing. So, so here's the thing. If I ever work at Marvel, I want to fucking... I want to do a comic that is just a continuation and sequel to this. I mean, good luck with that. They couldn't even keep a continuation to the 90s X-Men cartoon selling. Like, don't even do... Don't do a big thing. Like, do a six-issue miniseries. That's it. Beginning, middle, and end. Finish the series. End the cliffhanger. Deal with the zombies and then get Peter to fuck off counter Earth. The zombies unite the people and, and bring peace. It's the end of Watchmen, but it's this goddamn show. I uh and then I would just then I would write a normal Spider-Man story where he goes into an alternate universe, bring in all the dumb shit because I love this is so dumb and I love it. Real question, Boingo is. Yes. Did you or did you not have a childhood crush on Lady Vermin? No. Well, what the fuck was the point of doing this podcast? To talk about this dumb show. This show isn't dumb. It's fine. It's, it's a perfectly. It's weird, but it's a perfectly fine show. And I think, I think the fact that it's a fine show is the weirdest thing about it. Because there's no reason this show should be good. Like, Would this be a train be, wreck. It should be the next mutation of Spider-Man cartoons. But it isn't. It's adequate. It's fine. It's. Like, you can watch an episode and go, like, that was fucking weird, but I was entertained. Mm-hmm. Like, I get the feeling that this this would be, like, a... This would be a great comic YouTuber drunk first reaction video kind of a thing. But, like, you can see, like, you can see how, I, like, as a kid, scrolling through TV, trying to see something. Oh, you see Spider-Man. Oh, I want to watch this. And you watch it, and it immediately captivates a child and just goes, like... What the fuck am I watching? Why is there a Tiger Man? What's all the animal? This is Spider Man. What the fuck happened to Spider Man? Yeah, I can definitely see you doing. It's, th- this is Boingo Core in the same way Street Sharks are. Street Sharks don't have pre-existing lore though. No, that's what makes this is fucking weirder. Also, I just wanna I wanna point out. Guess what other shows going on around the same time? Batman Beyond is. Batman Beyond. Sick. 
uh, because Batman Beyond uh, started January 10th, 1999. Spider-Man came out October 2nd, 1999. So not enough time that it could have been a rip-off, but enough time that it is probably similar ideas just happening to strike at the same time. I mean, The Matrix did come out in 1998. You know the story with Batman Beyond, by the way? No. Uh, so, like, Bruce Timm and company came to Warner Brothers or whoever the fuck was in charge of the overseeing the show's production towards the end of New Adventures of Batman, and we're straight up like, yo, we're running out of ideas. We kind of need to end this show. Is that okay? And they, and they were like, what if we put it in the future? That's really hot right now. What if we put it in the future? And they were like, that's the dumbest fucking idea ever. There's no way we can do that. And and Warner Brothers was like, think about it. Over the week. Please, for us. Fine. And then they came in on Monday and went, so here's our story Bible. We, we really like this concept we've come up with. Can we please do this? Also, I was still right in saying Scott McNeil jo- uh, voiced uh, John Jameson. He did the voice for Man Wolf. Well, I didn't get that far, so how was I supposed to fucking know that? I know, I'm just pointing it out. Oh, man. This, this fucking whole series is just fucking... It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a ride. It's a, it's a ride. So tell me... Tell me, Vec, do you read any comics? Well, before we get into that, um, there were a few Marvel Legends reveals today. Do you want to talk about those? Oh, yeah. Let's let's go into my Discord server. Uh, I can throw you links, actually. I've got all the articles up. All right, cool. So um, the first thing that I saw, I don't think it was the first thing that went up, but uh, we have a, a new deluxe, because uh, these are all MCU Marvel Legends. And for the last few weeks, uh, we haven't t- talked about a lot of them, but Hasbro has been doing uh, this new subline of Marvel Legends, the Infinity Saga, of like these deluxe boxes of regular Marvel Legends figures that are like going back and redoing specific figures that they either missed or like were from way early days of new Hasbro Marvel Legends and need the update. And this one definitely falls under that set second category because this is Iron Man Mark Free from the first Iron Man movie. Um, and I'm gonna be honest, like it looked so good, I was half tempted to cancel my rule on not collecting MCU Marvel Legends. It looks really good because it comes with pretty much everything you could want for this figure. You've got uh the basic look of the armor is perfectly down de- like it's crazy how clunky the mark free looks now compared to the newer movie armors but like they got the look of that armor down just about as well as you could do at this scale i think um and this price point too um because this is since this is a deluxe figure this is retailing for 30 dollars um and it comes with alternate repulsor blast hands a alternate head with the visor up and a screen printed Robert Downey Jr. face, and then two alternate gauntlet pieces to represent like the missiles and the little rapid fire thing he does to kill a bunch of guys in that one scene. Um, when they're first showing off the armor after he's finished the Mark Free, and it's it is a sick looking figure. Um, I am I am highly tempted to get this. I don't think I actually will. Because it would be like the one MCU Legends thing I have, and it would stick out like a sore thumb. But uh, it's uh, it's pretty nice. It's a good. It's a good idea to like kind of have this subline to like, hey, here's all the things we didn't get to. Mm-hmm. And then keeping in with that thing, we also got two uh, two two packs um, revealed. And the first one is uh, based off of Avengers Endgame, Captain Marvel. And a slight redo of Rescue. That's nice. Um, we now, um, it because Captain Marvel's outfit and uh, obviously her hairstyle were significantly different from the Captain Marvel movie in Endgame. Though honestly, I didn't notice how different that outfit was in Endgame until I saw this figure. I was like, wow, they really did change a lot on that. Um, and then. Uh, this this updated version of, of Rescue is going to come with a unhelmeted head and then a, a head with the, <clears throat> excuse me, with the visor lifted up. <coughs> uh, something's in my throat, excuse me. Take a drink, take a drink. <clears throat> and then it also has the uh, 
the proper wing pack, which the original release didn't come with, and repulsor blast effect parts, and a nano gauntlet. Nice. Um, because you know, uh, the 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 whole thing is it's the scene with uh, hand it, handing off the gauntlet, and then hey, Peter Parker, you got something for me? Ara ara. Then a force. I'll never let that meme die. I'll never let that meme die. That was glorious. Um, but yeah, that's a solid ladies two pack. Um, doesn't super interest me, but I can see why other people would be in with it. Um, and then finally, uh, we have Happy Hogan and Mark bunch of fucking Roman numerals that I don't understand from Iron Man Free. Uh, that's twenty one. Okay, Mark 21, which is basically just fucking golden nougat Iron Man, it looks like. Yeah, this is mostly to get a happy figure. Yeah, which is nice, because he hasn't had one so far in the MCU. And he's like one of the few major characters that has... One of the few supporting characters that has it. Um, And I'll admit, it does look pretty clunky. It's definitely a lot of parts from other figures kind of like smushed together. But it works it's it's good enough um it's like finally he gets a f- it, it's good just because finally you get the happy hogan figure and like reddit to hasbro that's a pretty good looking john favreau head sculpt and this is just the prototype yeah mm-hmm. also like uh I, I hope somebody has shown this to john favreau i would love to see john favreau's reaction to seeing this because he yeah, he strikes like- he strikes me as the kind of guy who would be like oh they made they made a doll of me that's so nice yeah I mean, he's also probably going to put him himself in Star Wars eventually, so... Well, no, he's in Star Wars. He fucking... Vo- he's in Star Wars, and he already has a Star Wars figure. He's the big Chungus Mandalorian. Hmm, you're right. I was more thinking, like, face. Hmm. Well, I don't think they explicitly showed that character is dead, so he could come back and unhelmet, though he's a member of the Helmets Always cult, so who knows? Yeah, who knows? But comics, uh, fuck. I read, um... Two more trades of Don of X, and that was it. Nice. What are your thoughts? It's good, and I liked it. I liked it, and it was good. Um, Marauders, uh, where they fucking discover that Kate is dead, and Storm is basically like, hey, Emma, fuck you. I knew this was going to happen, and it's all your fault. And, and she's like, yeah, I know. I'm pretty upset. I tried to keep Kate close so this wouldn't happen. And... Uh, do you want me to turn into my diamond form so you can kick the shit out of me and feel better? No, that would be kind of weird. Fair enough. And then Iceman just going and fucking up all the humans. Like, oh, I can't kill you? All right, I'm going to freeze your limb and just break it off because I'm pissed. Yeah, you forget how fucking scary Iceman can get. Mm-hmm. Um, also, like, what the fuck is going on with Lockheed? I want to know about that shit. I want to see how that plays out. Yep. Um, and uh, the Wolverine book actually picked up some. I was I was surprised. Like I I was pretty down on that book last time. I remember. Um, but they wrapped up that first arc rather nicely. Um, maybe maybe totally get into Wolverine bonding with that detective character. Uh, he's a cool dude. Family man. Yeah. Uh, let me just keep scrolling here. Um. Oh, the fucking scene where Wolverine gets the fucking cuckoos to just throw themselves all over Quentin in order to get him to help with Wolverine's mission is so hilarious. <laughs> because th- they just fucking turn to him and go, all right, this is great, but we want to be a part of Cable's harem. Get get us in with fucking Cable. You're his uncle. You can do it. Except the one cuckoo who actually does like Quentin Choir. Yeah, that's what made it even more hilarious, is I knew that because you had told me. And I'm like, yeah. oh, this is going to be great to see how this plays out. Quentin's actually shaping up to be one of my favorite X-Men characters right now, just because he's such a shitbag. Mm-hmm. He's just fucking hilarious. And then, like, I'll admit, I still don't love it, but the the uh, the shit they did with uh, um, Domino and uh, Colossus in X-Force was... About as well handled as I think you could be on a concept like that. Yeah, because it's a weird thing. It was like Domino didn't want to be resurrected and have a full body back again because it like like there's a part of it that felt weird and everything. And like she died 
on a mission and she came back and she was like, no, it's fine. I'm all okay. And Gloss is just like, this feels a little weird. I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Yeah, and it felt like they were really setting them up to be an item, which felt weird. Because, like, there's the there's the fucking comic book nerd in me who's like, just just get it back with Kate. Just put him on the fucking Marauder. Just do it. Just do it. Please. Just do it. I want my classic pairing. But, yeah. like, yeah, stuff and things. Um, Unless you ask uh, Brian Michael Bendis, he goes like, no, Peter Parker needs to date Kate Pride. They need mm-hmm. to be a thing for some reason. And then the random ass issue where Storm just turns up dead and fucking Jean and Emma have to go into her mind to resurrect her is one of the most wonderfully abstract things I've seen out of comics in a while. Like, it felt Morrison-esque. Yeah, that was a one-shot in a series called Giant Size X-Men. Mm. They they did a short series of, like, every issue was an individual X-Men character, and that was Jean Grey and Emma Frost. They got their own issue. Mm-hmm. That's also the issue that really kind of lays out a lot more hints that of the poly relationship. Because mm-hmm. it begins with Jean Grey coming in on Scott, holding Scott's hand. And then as she's leaving, she gives a uh, kiss to Wolverine in full view of Scott. Yeah. And they, they're they fine with it. It's like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> and Wolverine and Scott are just chilling outside the whole time. Um, Being bros. Best bros. Also... Why the fuck is the outfit Jean wearing in that not just her regular outfit right now? It's not great, but it's so much better than the dress. It's the '90s version, isn't it? Without the head sock, though. No, it's like a, it's like different colors of the '90s version. That makes me like it way better. And the shoulder pads are super toned down. Like there's the, there's the final page. I yeah, I like it. I like that version. That's what I think she should. That should be her normal costume. Mm-hmm. Like it's not it's not great, but it's good enough to be Jean Grey's standard costume. Um, and then the fucking cable solo book starting. Oh my god, I I went into that like yeah yeah cable solo book. Let's give it a shot. And it just it just kept taking me in different directions that I was like, whoa, okay, yeah, let's do this. No, the cable book's fun. The cable like, book is real fun. Like fucking, it it opens with him and Wolverine having a having a sparring match, um, and and Wolver and it gets revealed at the end that Wolverine is just throwing the fights so that he can hand out. I think they said it's nodes he's giving to everybody. Like he's a fucking old wrestler trying to put up put over all the young young up and comers that he likes, <laughs> and that's great. Um. Uh, oh, and I skipped over it. The Marauders issue, which is in Volume Nine, um, where they where they find out Yellow Jacket is in uh, Pyro's head, and they deal with it. That's that's great, especially the final scene where they go and they fuck with the kids. Yeah. Um, but uh, no, getting back to the Cable book, that that was great, and then just like the whole the whole attitude he has towards Logan and Scott, where he's like sort of respectful and scared of Scott on a dad level, but also like a fuck you dad kind of thing. And he's, and he's all, and he calls Wolverine uncle Logan, which is awesome. Yeah, man. And then, uh, the I, fact I hadn't been keeping up with comics, so I didn't know about the whole young cable thing, but that, that made me enjoy young cable. I go like, yeah, no the fucking young cables dope. Same. Cause I was going like, okay, that's interesting, but I need to know more. Um, and then this gave me more, and I was like, all right, I'm here for it. Uh, especially because they tease old Cable coming back as a villain. Um, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I'm, I'm, I'm already invested enough that I Strife don't Strife comes back. Strife comes back. Okay. Do you know who Strife uh, is? Kind of, sort of. Okay, if you know the vague idea, don't worry. It's Strife. Okay. Uh, I do have a question, though, just because I need, I need clarification. Yes. So are Pixie and Armor supposed to be his harem, or are they just friends of him? They're just friends. Okay. Because the way the first issue, because I've only read the first issue, the way that plays it, I was like, it could be either way, especially with Make More Mutants being a thing. No, the Cable book goes pretty hard on the fact that Cable is dating one of the uh, cuckoos. Oh, okay. Okay. Like, he's dating one specific cuckoo, and uh, Emma does not... Like, enjoy Cable dating her daughter. Is that a thing? Are the Cuckoos, like, literally Emma's daughters? 
they're her daughters in the same way X-23 is Wolverine's daughter. Oh. So they're a clone, but their DNA was fucked with in the cloning mm-hmm. process, so they're a different entity. That's how they get around the fact that they can still be resurrected, even though they don't resurrect clones. Uh, also, the other thing I love about the Cable Book, they brought in fucking ROM shit. <laughs> yeah. I popped so hard when I realized what that sword was. It's it's Rom boy, Rom. Except we can't bring in Rom, but we can use Space Knights and all that shit. So why not? They say Solar Star. It's cool. I like it. Um, and then uh, we got the Brood issues where Brood becomes leader of the Brood, and that shit was just crazy and awesome in an action movie kind of way, especially the fucking bit where Cyclops first shows up to the fight, and he just goes up to Magic and is like, Commander, and she just goes, Captain. And he goes, can I have some holes to shoot my eye beams into? She's like, sure, coming right up. I I love that whole vibe. Uh, Craig, you got this connected. I guess we're using Garrick this week. All right. Um, (laughs) And then uh, the fucking bit where he's like, uh, hey, can you hold the line? And she's like, fuck it. And he just goes, good girl, and walks away. God damn, I, I love Cyclops being, like, the badass. You can just talk to all the badasses, and, like, everybody just sort of like, fuck you, Scott, you're right, but fuck you. Mm-hmm. Also, those issues were, like, my first comic book experience with, with uh, Havoc and the other Summer's brother. And fucking, I had no idea that, um, oh my god, what's his fucking name? Uh... Purple Mohawk Man. What's his What's his name again? Gladiator? Yeah, I had no idea Kid Gladiator was a thing. <laughs> so they bring in Kid Gladiator, and I'm like, all right, we can do that for a minute, okay. But, hey, but now you have some experience with Gladiator because of the Phoenix Saga. Mm-hmm. I still don't like his design, but he was f- written fine in these issues. Um, but... Yeah, th- those issues were just fun. That was just fun, like, crazy action main book stuff. Um, and then I'm trying to think if I've scrolled past it, if it was, like, an X-Force thing or where, where did that happen? I'm trying to think of it before I get to... Oh, yeah, yeah, it happens in X-Force. The fucking reveal of the Green Lagoon is the greatest pa- the greatest fucking splash page reveal in comics I've seen in a long time. Because it was, because they set it up of Xavier's like, yo, we need like a rec center because everybody's just fucking getting drunk in town square and we can't be having that if we're trying to be a legit nation. And Black Tom's like, oh, I got it covered. We we came up with, we we set that up last week. He's like, why, why had nobody told me? Because we don't want you there because you're a party pooper. Fair enough, I guess. But like, can I still come? Yeah, now that we've told you, I guess. And then, like, two issues later, here's the Green Lagoon, and it's the sickest fucking splash page of just all these characters hanging out and having fun in a fucking bar that's surrounded by, like, a jacuzzi slash pool with, like, a little island that's a stage that fucking Dazzler is performing on. Oh my god, I love it. You see who's the bartender? Blob. Blob's the bartender! He gets to be happy! (laughs) Did you just call him Bob? No, I you said Bob. Bo- Bob. Did you just call him Bob. Don't call him Bob. He's real sensitive about his weight. Well, uh, like also just seeing like a bunch of the cool like side characters. You see uh uh Magneto in the background, he's drinking. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, the scene where Wolverine has a drinking contest with him so he can steal the helmet. That's so good. Oh uh, man, and you and, like there's people in the water, they're hanging out. You see some some duplicates. Also, Sebastian Shaw's on the bottom. He's puking his guts out. Yeah. Uh, and the fucking... The bit where... um, Because Wolverine is there hanging out. The setup is that Wolverine is there hanging out with uh, fucking Gabby and Dokken. And, like, they... St- um, I forget how it happens, but, like, a bar fight is about to start. And they're like, should we, Dad? And he's like... Fuck yeah, let's fight as a family. It'll be awesome. And I'm like, this is the most based I've ever seen Wolverine. I love it. Yeah. And you also have like uh uh Emma Frost and her whole crew walking in like they own the place. You have Gambit and Rogue flirting it up. Mm-hmm. Um 
Oh my god, I just noticed fucking uh Forge is trying to hit on Storm. Also oh, also in the splash page, you see uh Dokken and Wolverine playing uh uh healer roulette. Yeah, I that's uh that's how it opens, and I just fucking realized and I'm checking real quick. Damn, Gwenpool is not in this splash page. That would have been a great place to just throw her in somewhere. But yeah. uh all well. And uh fucking just Apocalypse sitting at a table by himself and and Gene and Scott trying to come up and talk to him and clearly being awkward as fuck. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of things that they're trying to do. They're getting a lot of cool character stuff dealt with. Just Havoc like, having a, a drinking. Nice, here's a nice, wholesome X-Men poster that comic book shops can sell. Here's the thing that X-Men have been wanting for years. A place to be cool quiet and normal and themselves without fear of the outside world Mm -hmm. mystique hanging out with wolverine and watching the whole thing colossus looking on disappointed Mm. it's just it's just the whole thing the whole vibe is just solid banshee polaris uh one of the multiple mans and fucking uh havoc and i don't recognize that other character they're all at a table together yeah I think that's another one of the new mutants. I think that's Mirage. Yeah. Oh, and Nightcrawler is Banff is stealing a drink from the bar with his powers. That's great. Yeah. No, it's just all around just wholesome. It's nice. It's nice seeing them be happy for once. Mm-hmm. Seeing mutants in a normal, a normal, normal environment. And then Wolverine and uh, Kid Omega and fucking uh, Domino get dragged away to go do a mission in Savage Lands. And it's miserable. Yeah, because, it, because this is X Force, and of course that happens. And um, Kid Omega goes in full pants and a, a fucking flannel shirt, and he's fucking sweating his ass off, and he's going like, "It's so fucking hot." And Wolverine just goes like, "Take off your fucking shirt, jacket," and he goes like, "This is like a thousand dollar jacket." Oh, and Wolverine just cuts it off, and it's like, "There, you feel better now." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that was uh, Volumes 8 and 9 of Dawn of X. I had meant to read Volume 10 before this, but got busy, because that happens. So, real quick, let's... I have a lot of comics I read, so let's Tell talk me about, about all the comics. Tell me, tell me about all the comics. Make it so I can't even sleep tonight. Do it. Do it. So, do it. first things first, we have Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, yeah. We had uh, the... to that on MMWP, didn't we? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, it's fine. It's a fun little goofy comic. Um, he comes into a a small Texas town, goes like, hey, y'all fucking shit up. I'm gonna beat your ass. And the town starts looking at him as a hero, and he's going like, I'm not a hero. I'm not here to save you. I'm here for my own reasons. It just so happens to save you, too. But I'm not here for you. I'm here for me. You know, classic Stone Cold. Mm Mm-hmm. So he goes up against this criminal organization that's fucking over this small town, and they're just trying to figure out, why is Stone Cold Steve Austin doing this? And, like, one of the early theories is, like, is he a son of someone we fucked over? Is that why? And it's like, no. Like, he's not related to anybody in this town. Why? And, like, earlier on in the uh, the Four Issue miniseries, Stone Cold is looking on at uh, at an oil field where an old guy got pushed off his land. Okay. And he looks pissed. Because he's like, so okay. Hero of the people. And so, like, eventually the big crime boss goes, like, why the fuck are you doing all this? And he goes, yo, that old farmer, you pushed off his land so you could steal his oil? What, are you like his son? Are you related to him? Nah. I was just passing by and I was hungry as fuck and he fed me, even though he had so little. And then I heard that you fucked him over and he died? I'm gonna fuck your shit up. That's the whole reason. It's that one dude helped him, and it's like, oh, no. They fucked over that dude? I'm going to destroy your entire criminal enterprise. Dick. Yeah. It's it, it's not great, but it's a, it's a cute little story about Stone Cold Steve Austin fighting bad guys. Let's see. I read the second issue of uh, Spider-Man, the Spider-Shadow What If story. Right. And it's, it's basically just more Spider-Man diving deeper into darkness and all that stuff and killing people. Hmm. I uh, read the latest issue of X Factor, which sadly is going to end at issue 10, even though it's one of my favorite X books going right now. Right, uh, cool. Yep. Uh, they basically try to start wrapping up a lot of the story that they were dealing with. Uh, it's so far satisfying. It's pretty quick, but again, 
they just gave the uh, writer a, just a recently notice of what's going on, so they had to wrap it up quick. Uh, and basically they realized, oh, wait a second, we are able to do the thing where our mutant powers can combine in interesting ways to do new things. That's kind of dope. Uh, let's see. I read Giant Size Amazing Spider-Man, uh, King's Ransom. That's the end of the current arc. Boomerang uh, basically betrays Spider-Man so he can become a bad guy again. But Boomerang feels really bad about it. And you can tell that that's going to be his story going forward. It's like a redemption trying to actually be a good guy. Okay. Uh, also, Kingpin brings back his son. His son back from the dead. That's not just something they made up for Spider-Verse? Nope. Okay. It may be inspired by Spider-Verse, though. Uh, Heroes Reborn, issues one and two. Uh, it's a cool little alternate story thing. It feels a lot like House of M, but Avengers. The basic premise is, uh, what would the Marvel Universe look like if Captain America hadn't come out of the ice? And it's basically, it's basically DC. It's DC Comics. They do a lot of things like DC Comics. Okay. Yeah. Like, Hyperion is basically Superman. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I was listening to a podcast where people talk, were talking about the original uh, Squadron Supreme at work today. They, like, but, fused uh, the Beyonder and Mr. Uh, Beyonder and Mr. Mystic Picklick. Hmm. The Hulk is basically bizarro because this alternate reality is fucking with the Hulk's mind, so he's talking backwards. Okay. It's basically Blade is the only person who realizes the world's fucked up, and he's trying to get the Avengers back together. And so he's trying to find Captain America and all that kind of stuff. Hmm. Then I read the one shots. One of them is just setting up more things in the main series. It's fine. The other one is Peter Parker, the amazing shutterbug. It's basically Peter, the Peter Parker of this universe, this whole story where uh, he didn't get bit by a spider. Um, and his life just goes on as normal. And eventually Mary, uh, Aunt May is in a department store while Hyperion's fighting outside and collateral damage kills Aunt May. So he goes like, ah, uh, I need to get a job to help my uncle. And so he becomes a photographer because he develops a drone system that can follow Hyperion on all of his adventures. So he becomes Jimmy Olsen. Oh. And during the events of the main book, uh, everything, uh, all the bad guys are escaping uh, the negative zone, which is basically the, the, the kind of jerry-rigged phantom zone. So all the bad guys are escaping that. And basically, do you know the Annihilation Wave from Annihilation? Sort of. It's a giant colony of bugs that Annihilus commands. Well, basically, they shrunk it down. So it's about the size of, like, a cloud and not the size of, like, a galaxy-destroying event. Hmm. And uh, Hyperion stops it, all that kind of stuff. But one was left, and it bit Peter Parker. So he starts mutating into a weird Annihilus creature. And he goes like, well... I know what I'm doing. He jumps out of the window and kills himself. Damn. That's the story of Peter Barker in this universe. Uh, also, Hank Pym is there. He turns himself into Ultron and is like uh, Metallo with the Whoa. Kryptonian heart, but it's Hank Pym. Uh, Pym particles. It's neat. Uh, I started reading the Magic the Gathering Boom comic. It's, it's weird high fantasy. That's about it. All right. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, this is the issue that deals with Doctor Doom. Uh, basically, they're trying to fight Doctor Doom, and he does all his magic bullshit. He changes his body into the Hulkling, and fights him there, and it's just like, ha, I'm Doctor Doom, you can't beat me, fuck you. And they figure, oh, wait a second, Doctor Doom's really prideful? If we insult him, he might change back, and we could do something there. So they start saying, like, oh, you, you can't beat us in your human body? That's kind of lame. And Dr. Doom goes like, motherfucker, I'm Dr. Doom. I can beat you in whatever body I want. So he starts to change his mind over. But then they mess with his magic and they put him in the body of Rocket Raccoon. So you Whoa. just see Rocket Raccoon talking like Doom for a few minutes. Whoa. And they're trying to figure out, okay, what are we going to do with Doom? And then Peter Quill comes up with the idea of like, wait a second. Dr. Doom may be a bastard, but he's a man of his word. And so Peter Quill comes up with the brilliant idea. Hey, Dr. Doom, you're drafted into the Guardians of the Galaxy. Because if we, because if you're a man of your word, you'll help us out and not screw us over by being a guardian of the galaxy. Hmm. So basically, it's using Doctor Doom's own logic to like make him a good guy. Whoa! <laughs> I'm trying to breeze through some of these because I can tell you are tired. I'm I'm doing the best. Yeah, I'm just I'm doing the best. I am the best. 
This is a wrestling promo now. Fuck you. Uh, We're going to fight. Curse Where of the man I? thing. <laughs> We're talking about man thing here. Okay. Okay. I'm. Uh, who's man thing? He's like swamp thing, but manier. All right. Sick. Uh, basically, they set up the idea that uh, the new status quo for man thing where the he's an, a dimension in and of himself and the dude who became man thing is in it. And they uh, they fight people. They fight the person who was causing all the problems. Uh, hmm. Strange Academy, the newest issue, issue 10. They take a field trip to Asgard. They get disappointed because Thor doesn't come and greet them. It's Volstag. What a bunch of bitches. Volstag's awesome. Fuck them. They're teenagers. What Fuck do you expect? Them. Also, it turns out that the uh, the twins, uh, the Asgardian twins that are at the Academy, they're the sons of the Enchantress. Whoa. Yeah. Hellions, they go on a mission, but uh, Arcade fucks them up. Arcade's the dude who makes death traps. Who did the Enchantress fuck? A random ass guardian. Okay. Uh, but basically, the whole point of the mission was to build a, a, a thing that the, uh, Mr. Sinister want, wanted. So he basically w- tricked his team to do it for him, uh, do the thing for him. And uh, the only person he couldn't do that to is Psylocke. So like the rest of the team has their mind altered to think, oh, we won the the battle. We did. We 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 were a superhero team. We did the thing. But Psylocke is just look. No, it's Mister Center just sort of fucked them all over. And it's just like fuck you, you asshole. So pretty much Hellions. <laughs> uh, the first issue of X Corp. Uh, it's cool. It's basically like hey, Krakoa, but they're a corporation and they're trying to do corporate stuff and they're trying to. Sell their goods to humans. Uh, this stars Angel Pen- uh Angel, the woman, the red woman from Hawks and Pox, who went on the mission with them. When you know the one fighting. How long does it take for them to fucking use their powers and hit things? Uh, and Mister Duplicate, Duplicate. Bolingo, how are you gonna sell a book if there's no fighting? Um, by having a giant fucking uh helicarrier corporate headquarters that flies to brazil to save angel whoa also angel gets hit by something or is like stressed and slowly turns into archangel so like he's both he can be both our angel and archangel i yeah and i started reading the 2020 version of star wars darth vader it is dope uh i i thought i heard people saying it wasn't that good but i really enjoyed it you're probably thinking of Oh god, I can't remember the exact. It's like something like Star Wars Vader Visions, mm. which is a book that gets real fucking toxic about some of the some of the ways it writes women. It's real embarrassing. Well, the way they did something interesting with women in this book because basically this takes place right after Empire. So mm-hmm. Darth Vader's going like, "Okay, who the fuck didn't tell me about my son? Who the fuck didn't tell me about Padme? What the fuck's going on?" So he goes on a mission to fucking find out this information, and he eventually gets to uh uh now uh uh, 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 uh uh he gets to Tatooine cuz he's looking up things, and then he sees a woman who looks exactly like Padme. And you're going like, "Is that fucking Padme? Are they making Padme alive? What the fuck's going on?" Next issue? No. Remember the handmaidens of Padme in episode one? Mm-hmm. They all lived. They all still look like Padme, and they're all trying to get revenge on whoever killed Padme. It's Anakin Skywalker. So, like, they don't know Darth Vader's Anakin Skywalker, but they think Darth Vader killed Anakin and Padme. So they all lead him into a trap on Naboo with all, like, the, the people who were still loyal to Amidala. And they go like, hey, Darth Vader... You killed Amidala and her boyfriend. Fuck you, we're gonna kill you. And Darth Vader goes like, no you're not, I'm Darth Vader. So he gets out of that situation. He gets to the Emperor and the Emperor goes like, bitch, I told you I told you to get your ass home and you didn't. Fuck you. I'm removing your robot limbs, putting you back on Mustafar and you have to crawl your way back here on your own. With no force. The second I know how you have use the force, I'm gonna send the platoon to fucking kill you. Damn, Palpy's an asshole. So Darth Vader's on Mustafar. He's crawling to the mining station. He takes droid parts, fucking welds them onto his robot parts. So now he's walking. He has a big-ass fucking robot arm, and he's trying to deal with the thing. And then a fucking Sith assassin shows up and goes like, hey, I'm supposed to make your life harder. And he goes like, motherfucker, you're not yeah. even a member of the Sith. You're just following order. You're just doing this for because? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm doing. 
It's like, all right, fine. So he's trying to get his way to Palpatine to go like, motherfucker, I'm killing you, Palpatine. And he gets to the the planet from episode nine. Exegol? Exegol. He goes to Exegol. And they basically go like, here, motherfuckers, here's your fucking lore reason why Exegol exists. It's a secret base. How is it powered and how is all the things done? Guess what? They have a giant fucking kyber crystal that they're torturing for energy. There. You happy? Oh. But basically, Darth Vader does Darth Vader shit, and Palpatine goes like, "All right, cool, you you passed the test. Let's go do shit." And that's the that's the story so far. It's good. Mm. So, uh, uh, fucking sidebarring back to X Factor for a second. Did you see that thing where like some fucking comic journalist tried to stir up shit about that book getting canceled by being like, "Yo, look at the torrent numbers for this. Everybody who fucking torrented and read this on Read Comics, you're an asshole because you're the reason this series got canceled." And was like trying to at the writer. That's that's gross. It, it's I'm pretty sure what is happening is it's not it's getting ended. She, she's doing the trial of Magneto because it's the same creative team. They're doing trial of Magneto because it's probably related to X Factor, and then they're going to do at more X Factor afterwards, restarting at number one. That's, that's even worse than I thought it was. That's, because it's, that's probably what's happening because they're doing trial of Magneto, which looks interesting. But it's pretty late. You're you're tired. Why don't you tell the people where you're where they can find you? E H E V A C U U M I N A T O R. That is how you spell the vacuumator. Go search it on whatever fucking website you want and subscribe to or follow whatever account comes up. Maybe it's mine, maybe it's not. I don't fucking care. I'm excited because the G- the Snake Eyes Origins trailer comes out this weekend, guys. New generation of Baroness simps. Let's go. All right. Well, hey, howdy, howdy. I'm Chris Bungo, writer guest, and I make video essays and editorials on YouTube. Uh, you can find me by searching for Boingo Writer. You can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at Boingo underscore writer. You can join my Discord server. A link to that is in the description. And if you're listening to this on Modular Media on YouTube, remember to subscribe, like, and leave a comment. If you're listening to this on any other podcasting platform, such as Spotify or Apple Podcasts, remember, you can follow it and get every episode as we update. Uh, If you want, you can leave a voice message on our Anchor page. A link to that is on our YouTube page. It's anchor.fm forward slash no prize podcast, I think. I'll get a better description. I'll get a better version. Of that, but in the meantime, this has been Macho Media No Price Podcast. Vac, do you have any final words before we leave and let you go to sleep? Why no. was the suit, man? I what?